All right, Selena, go ahead. It's your turn. Okay. <laughs> so, do you want me to go way back in the vault? Like, to the <laughs> What year did you start college, eh? Inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Can we edit it? Just kidding. <laughs> So hello everyone, welcome to this episode of Response Roundtable. Today we're talking about natives in education. So um, we're here with, we have some special guests. We're so excited, we finally have guests on the show. <laughs> um, and these are some really awesome, important guests that we have today. Guys, really quick, every oh. time you do that, I always think like, burr, 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 burr. <laughs> <laughs> So um, first, what we're going to do is we'll um, go around um, and do intros. If the guests want to do your intro. So uh, we'll start with Miss Madame President. <laughs> <laughs> Carla Bird, take it away. <laughs> Hi, my name is Carla Bird. I'm Blackfeet. I'm from uh, Browning, Montana. And I actually went to school with um, so well, Dr. Hill and, and Miss Devro, and um, we attended school at the University of Montana, and we had such a good time there. Um, and I am, well, I received my uh, doctorate in higher education, and right now I'm the president of Blackfeet Community College. <laughs> Prez, Prez from the res. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, Darius, do you want to go? Uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I think Darius began in the shit, the clan in the shit, Kia Ani Bashichi, Tachitni just K, okay, Dene Deshnella. Hello, names of Darius Begay. I am in my fourth year here at the University of Oklahoma in Norman, Oklahoma. And I am currently studying computer science with a minor in mathematics. And I am from Phoenix, Arizona enrolled member of the Colorado River Indian Tribe, as well as Navajo, identify Navajo. So that's the last name, Begay. Dang it, Darius, you have a really good at introduction. <laughs> <laughs> I've, had to do that, I've had to do that introduction a lot um, this past year, so getting used to it. You got it down. Yeah, that's really it down. Down. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Dr. Hill. Hi everybody, my name is Selena Beaumont Hill. I'm from Prior, Montana, which is on the Crow Reservation, um, but I'm also Blackfeet. I know, I'm my own worst enemy. Kidding. Montana <laughs> um, <laughs> natives will get that. Yeah, could you edit that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, please start over. <laughs> Um, let's see. Okay, and I just recently graduated from the University of Montana with my doctorate in counselor education. Yay! And who do you work for? Oh, oh gosh. I work for the American Indian Graduate Center as the program manager for a brand new initiative called Rising Native Graduates, which we're starting to a program to mentor undergraduate Native students into graduate school. Oh, snap. It's so awesome. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, that's really cool. So um, we feel so fortunate to have you guys online and I was like praying and hoping. So firstly, I have known Selena and Carl, actually I've, seen, I've known Selena for a really long time. So Selena like was one of the people that helped me like when I was getting into my undergrad, like really awesome, someone I've always looked up to. And then we got to reconnect recently um, when we worked in the same office before I moved here. Um, and I was when she came back to go to her doctorate. Um, and then Carla Bird, Dr. Bird, we met, uh, I don't, it's been, I don't know how long, but we became best friends instantly. And we like are twins too. So people always think <laughs> we're either the same person or we're sisters. So that's how I know her. Um, and uh, I'm just so excited to have this. And Adarius, thank you so much for just hopping on. Like, I know Darius, like when he told me, his age and he's in his fourth year. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm getting old, time is flying. <laughs> just went to college. This is crazy. So, okay, so we'll just start off with, uh, so what was the challenge that you experienced as a Native student and what helped you overcome that? 
Well, I guess I can go, uh, considering I'm still in school. Uh, <laughs> I, think, I think right now, really, it's just um, being away from family and stuff has been a, a major thing for me and missing the home cooked meals and stuff. But what I've really done to overcome it was really just dive deep into the organizations here, um, Native American organizations, make friends and stuff. Uh, that's why I did joining um, my school's fraternity, um, Native fraternity, Sigma Nu Alpha Gamma, definitely, definitely helped with that. Um, being able to create a brotherhood with some with some guys who <clears throat> they they all they're all in state, but <laughs> they're they're still happy to have me um, around and. Maybe once in a while we'll just all cook together and play video games. So <laughs> it's really great to have that kind of fellowship with some people. Nice. That's awesome. I think, Lynette, you could probably speak to that too, right? Because you're. Yeah, in actually, I, I can relate to, to your story because, you know, I, I myself, uh, you know, never really got a chance to get off the res. You know, the, we had those. Um, periodic, you know, family vacations, but, you know, I've only been to Phoenix once, and, um, well, I went to school at ASU, Arizona State University, so second time I ever went to ASU, or Phoenix, was for school, and I went straight from high school to college, and that was kind of like a culture shock for me, um, especially coming off the res, I mean, I mean, I did go to school, like, in a border town, um, Asian, I guess is the correct term, but yeah, um, but um, yeah, definitely like seeing all the other, um, like the other cultures that were there, like different backgrounds, Um, I was like not that out of my element, I guess you could say, but organizations definitely helped me, Um, they helped me, I mean, I was so glad that they had like an American Indian program, like, um, what do they call it? A's. Oh, A- 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 yeah, A- A- S. Do you guys know this? Yeah, yeah, American yeah. Indian Student Support Services. Yes. Is it called something? Oh, I work in Asian. <laughs> but yeah, they had that, and it was very resourceful, and it was it was great because we definitely got to like link with other natives on campus. Because I believe at the time I was there, I don't know if it's still the same, but um, Native Americans only made up one percent of the student population, so it was definitely great to link up with other natives. Um, and then from there, I learned about the Native American sorority, Alpha Pi Omega, and I joined that sorority so that I can, I know what you mean by like, you know, your brotherhood, my sisterhood, you know, um, and then the whole thing about, you know, me, other matriarchs, (laughs) (laughs) other women you can relate to, you know, so that I mean, I can definitely relate in that sense. I could relate in the sense, well, first, let me point out, Darius, like, you're, what, four hours from home, five hours from home? Like, you could drive from home to ASU, like your driving distance. Mm-hmm. Oh. oh, sorry. How funny, I need like, you like, can see me on like, in your backs to me. <laughs> but you're, uh, yeah. you were in driving distance, right? And you're just like, so far away, you have to take a flight to get here. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, 14, 14 hour drive. Mm-hmm. You, have you driven it? Uh, yes. I, I drive there a lot, but thankfully my dad, he lives in Albuquerque, so I'm able to just spend the night there, good halfway point, and then get a, get a burrito, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like me, I definitely wanted to go out of state. Um, I was thinking about like Dartmouth and like East Coast schools, Harvard, and then when I thought about the reality, being far from home, I'm like, I don't think I can do this. <laughs> yeah, right. And um, so I was like, I want to go out of state, but then yet still be close to home. So that's why I chose Arizona State University. It is like a six hour drive, so somewhat mm-hmm. close. And I think I can relate to, I'm sure everyone here could, but I also missed home a lot. Like my very first time I went to school, I was like, I went home every weekend because mine was driving distance. And I went to the better school, I went to University of Arizona, and I was like, ah, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> All the shade. <laughs> there were rival schools. But um, no, I went to University of Arizona, and when I was in Tucson, I would want to go home every weekend. Like every weekend, I wanted to drive home. So I feel you on that, missing family. And home cooked meals. Yes. <laughs> um, but what about Carla or Selena? What was your experiences? 
I, I went to the University of Montana right out of high school and um, I, I have to agree with everyone and in, in, in their comments that they made already that um, it is a shock and um, and I think the first thing you feel is different and you feel like you stick out and you can't relate and everything's new and scary and um, you're just trying to navigate this big system um, while you're an adult for the first time. So it, it can be really overwhelming, I think. And um, and, and really, if it's um, the, the institution we went to, um, you know, it was a non-native institution. And so um, that it can be really, um, you know, kind of isolating in some ways. And, um, and the classroom experience can be isolating. Um, if you're speaking from a different perspective and you're not seeing yourself as a Native American reflected in the literature, or you're not seeing Native American professors, or you don't have Native American uh, classmates, um, and what you're reading and what you're learning, you can't relate to. So it, it can be very, very challenging. And I think there's numerous, numerous challenges for American Indians when they um, attend non-native institutions. Um, I think immediately, um, and you know, sometimes um, students, they step out of education, um, not necessarily for academic reasons, but because everything is so overwhelming and, you know, and sometimes life happens and, and that's okay. And, um, and I think part of um, what I always try to promote is that, um, you know, persistence is important. And even if you step out of education, you can always step back into education. And it doesn't mean, and it shouldn't have a negative connotation because um, as you know, we all, we all got crazy lives, busy lives. Um, we have a lot of connections, a lot of relations back home. And um, sometimes things happen that are unexpected. Um, I think what really helped me was um, connecting, connecting with other native students. Um, you know, attending um, American Indian student events, building my own network of um, friends and mentors. And mentorship is big, like, um, especially as you climb up the ladder of, you know, going from bachelor's to graduate school, that mentorship is really important. And I, I was just fortunate to kind of really latch on to some people who were um, really successful and kind of took me under their wing. And so I was able to kind of learn from them um, about the, I guess, the, the higher ed um, area. But um, yeah, I think um, really it came down to connecting with other Native people. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And like, personally, because like, Carla, like everything you're saying with having mentors and really just finding those people that have our, who are navigating the system or who already have experience with navigating the system is so important because I mean, Dr. Bird and Dr. Hill, like you two are like people that I could, like I wouldn't have made it through grad school if I didn't see you guys doing it. Right. And like that is, that was huge for me. Like, and you know, that was, that was huge. Like, I remember, you know, Carla, like even Carla, like when you're going through your doctorate program, you know, and we lived together at the time. <laughs> it was like, we were crazy. Like we would come out of the, our separate bedrooms and we would be wearing <laughs> the same clothes. <laughs> like we were so much alike, <laughs> but like we, you know, like going through that whole process with you, like made me see that it was possible for me. And like, I didn't even know the process. I'm like, what do you mean you had to like propose your research and then you had to defend it? Like, what does that even mean? You know? I know. I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, yeah. And then the day of her defense, I'm like, okay, what can I do for you? Let me do your makeup and your hair. And then, <laughs> like, that's the least I can do <laughs> to de stress your day. But um, yeah, I feel like that's so, so important when you're like, think, seeing yourself in those spaces. Is so important. Representation matters. <laughs> All right, Selena, go ahead. It's your turn. Okay. <laughs> so, do you want me to go way back in the vault, like to the? <laughs> what year did you start college? Eh? Inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Can we edit it? Just kidding. <laughs> I 
I graduated <laughs> in 99. So that means I gra I started in 95 in my undergrad. Anyway, the thing that I was, I know, right? Let's edit that because that's a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but the one thing I remember from starting college, I transferred. I started at a college close to my home where I went to class. I was at um, a non, uh, predominantly white institution, but I had three cousins that also started that semester. Everything was good. I had classes with my sister. Um, you know, it was it was it was a nice transition. And then I transferred. And that first semester, and I moved away because my mom's like, "Okay, you're ready." Um, so I moved away, and I had a daughter. I she was a toddler when we moved away, and I spent. So I didn't live in the dorms. I lived, you know, off campus, and um, I spent a whole semester talking to my only my daughter, right? Because I was so shy. I know you guys won't believe that now, but back then I was so shy. I couldn't even like ask a question in class because I got all nervous and like was worried that what I what I had to bring to the, the classroom or the questions I had weren't valid because nobody else in that classroom had the same experiences that I had. And so that took, you know, I, I finally got a job on campus and that's what helped me um, kind of break out of that shell. And then I joined the Indian club um, there were seven other Native students on that campus and we had, you know, we had a club, we had a powwow every spring and that, that really is what got me out. And so I always encourage students to, whatever feels comfortable to them, it, get engaged in that way. At the time, finding a job on campus, campus was what was comfortable for me. Um, but really, when, when you asked this question, I thought about my doctoral program. And by then, you know, I had work experience under my belt. I was not only um, mature age-wise, but I just had a career already. And so the biggest transition for me was figuring out how I was going to adapt the skills that I was learning and the content that I was learning to my community, knowing that everything we learn at Western institutions isn't always gonna work the way they say it's gonna work. And so for me, that was probably the biggest challenge when I first came back was like, okay, this is good, I wanna learn, I'm here to learn, but I also need to think about how this is really gonna look in my community working with Indian people. So, um, and that took a lot of work. I'm still working on it, I'm still trying to figure it out. If Turquoise was here, like, could see me right now, because I always do this to her when we're on the same page. I'm like, yes, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. If you guys watch our response episode, she sometimes does that. You know, but we're not in the same room. So <laughs> yes. Um. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's so true. And it is crazy because I know when I remember. I was like so excited to have you back on campus, Selena. Like, and then when you did come back, it was like, oh my gosh, it's like just reconnecting. And then like hearing your experience in your doctoral program, I think was really huge too. Cause you know, it was like, it was like you were going through this whole new experience too. You know, even like, cause, and you know, you have your family and like, it's so different then. And you had to move away from home again, you know, like to do your doctoral program. And yeah. That that lonesomeness never you know it doesn't change like once you go home and come back you still you feel it all over again and then you remember oh yeah that's why i went home because that feeling of being away from your family and community it's not always easy and i think we need to be honest about that instead of saying you know like because i think when people send us away they're like you know go do this you're, you'll come home but we still need to talk about well, how do we stay connected? How do we, when we do get homesick, what do we do about it? You know, what are some ways we can do that by not driving the four to five hours every weekend? Sometimes we have to do that, but sometimes we can't afford to time-wise just because of all of the requirements on our time or demands on our time. So, so I'm do you, oh, sorry, but do you feel like that's like one of the most important things to support when you're working with Native students? Definitely. I think when, when you asked me that question or when you sent the questions, the first thing that came to my mind was just meeting students where they're at. Some students don't, you know, they've had experiences where they're used to being away from home or they didn't, you know, they didn't grow up in their, um, in their uh, tribal communities. And so you, but you need to meet them where they're at because whatever that struggle is, we all have, we all have struggles regardless of where we come from. And so I think just um, 
I kind of lost my train of thought, but just really value or validating their experience. That's the way we can best support Native students. Um, and that it, it looks different with every Native student, whether they came from the same community or even the same family, their experience is different. And to be able to hear that and to validate it and just support them wherever they need support is, is, is a really important thing to um, getting Natives through higher education. That's true. I think that's true too because I mean, for me, being like first generation, like, oh, yeah. um, you know, I never had those people to tell me like, you know, do this, do that, you know, I recommend doing this. So about your financial aid. Yeah, like, you know, I really didn't have those people to tell me that stuff. And so, you know, I kind of went to, I felt like I went into school like blindsided kind mm -hmm. of, like, I didn't know what to expect, you know, going to a big university and then like, it was, it was I don't know. <laughs> but yeah it's a culture shock again <laughs> but yeah that was kind of like me and but then I was glad that AOSS was there yeah. and to help in dealing with sort of those sort of things too mm -hmm. I will say maybe this is a question I could pose to you guys but I um I went the route with uh, actually getting a job on school like that was my path like it was getting a job on school that helped me feel more comfortable and I didn't find my Native American program until way later in school. <laughs> so what, what would you say to people that either are sh too shy or um, don't really want to seek out the services or how can we, like what would you say to those students that are just, that can't find it or don't want to find the Native American services or resources? Because I will say, I'm like, I was shy and I was also like, I don't really, I just want to go to my class and that's it, you know, mm -hmm. go home. That was all I really did. And then play basketball, that was there for basketball, but that was the only thing I wanted to do. How do you bring them to show them the value of the yeah, AIFF? You know, I think it's um, something that we really work with our students is on self-advocacy and I think it's it's really easy to um, especially when you go somewhere where um, you're a minority or um, you're you know um, and it's a large institution it's kind of easy to get lost in the system and um, and then you're you're starting to become a doll and kind of live on your own and I think um, one of the things is we really need to teach um, self-advocacy skills and um, you know that that's something that I think I never had and and I had to learn how to develop those in order to um, navigate this this strange system and so I had to learn how to um, talk to financial aid and um, put myself out there and meet people and, and start conversations um, but that self-advocacy piece I think is is really um, it doesn't come natural, I think, um, that, that whole, um, as Native people, you know, we're always tending to put other people first. And so when you, when you talk about self-advocacy or focusing on your educational goals or this is my success or um, this is my career, it just, it's just unusual. And it's, um, it's not, um, you know, that's not like our norm, I guess, to, to, to really put ourselves out there. And, you know, typically it's always about um, other people and taking care of other people and thinking about the whole. Um, but I think when we talk about um, when students first get to higher ed, I think they're really, you know, um, in order for our students to connect, it's kind of, it, it is scary, but it's kind of putting yourself out there and, and, um, you know, taking a, um, a step forward and and really starting to explore that um, and again and I and I do have to advocate for mentorship again I think that opens a whole different worldview um, and you know like turquoise and and Selena said um, you know that mentorship piece is so important and I remember when I was in school um, like I had a, a, a doc a non-native um, doctorate student teach one of my classes and it just seemed like to me he just seemed so intelligent and he must have came from a wealthy family and maybe he has a family of doctors and and so that was out of reach and then it wasn't until I started seeing native doctors on campus that I knew native doctors that were from Browning and that were Blackfeet and I started to seeing 
I started seeing it that look there's an ind indigenous doctor and and that means like to me I was like they if they could do it like I can other people can and I think once you see it it just changes your whole world view um, and learning from those people you know building a relationship um, you know one of the the doctors that turquoise and uh, selena know is dr um pearl yellow man and she she was really a um, role model for me she was a navajo doctor pursuing higher education and and pearl and selena and and megan hopkins who's also a doctor doctor rides at the door um you know and several others and douglas um we had Sienna shout. We all got to attend school together um, and pursue our master's degree in counselor education. But along with that mentorship piece, I want to say like a cohort of Native people, we all pursued the counselor education program. And so we really had each other to get through the, the hard times in grad school in those two years. And so um, I think we really built a strong connection. And so um, I would say mentorship, self-advocacy, and then developing some type of cohort with um, other Native people are, are people that you can relate to. Darius, all the things that we're talking about right now, are you experiencing those? <laughs> <You're> Ooh, <clears throat> man, I was pretty outgoing when I came here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, OU, my parents went to school here and stuff, so some of the faculty that were here um, knew my parents, and they really reached out to me um, coming in, so I really didn't have that struggle, <clears throat> but I think um, my sophomore year, I think I started to take up um, what they're saying is a mentorship role, is um, just reaching out to the incoming freshmen, saying hi to them throughout the union and stuff, and then really just um, being that friendly face for these other organizations. I was a part of at the time. That way they're able to know like, oh, there's someone I know who's friendly and stuff and just get them slowly coming into these orgs and stuff. It's really something that I believe benefits well. And I don't know, I was pretty outgoing <laughs> coming in. So, and I came from a big school in Phoenix. So uh, I didn't really have that struggle of all this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's still that's still in itself right like the the welcoming face part and being there for something that's coming into a system like you're saying like coming into a system that's scary that we have to navigate so yeah and i feel like that's a perfect example of what selena you're talking about of like meeting students where they're at right it's like the students are going to come on all different levels of you know what their experience is mm -hmm. going to be there but then like for Darius to like step up then and be like oh no like I I feel like okay to be here right now so I'm going to like help someone else feel yeah. okay you know sure. like that's huge and you know that support that you had at Darius like obviously that got you to the point where you feel like you could mentor someone else and and that's the type of support I think that you know mm -hmm. we're we're trying to get at yeah. <laughs> which is really awesome because then you become that support for someone you know and that's yeah. that's huge so that's awesome Jerry. it's like like that's amazing <laughs> yeah like look out wish i was doing that at 20 minutes <laughs> Um, well, we really struggled. <laughs> yeah. <It was> like, <laughs> like, I am so, so fortunate to be surrounded by, like, these badass indigenous <laughs> women who now I see are, like, you know, like, they're doctors. Like, those are, you, you know, like, you guys are, like, some of the closest people to me. And, like, that is something that, that's, like, a perfect example of that. Like, seeing yourself as a doctor, seeing yourself in these positions, like that is like, literally I would not be here today if I didn't have those connections to, to, to that, those people, right? And so that's so huge. And when we talk about, you know, like really supporting native students, like just existing in these systems is support. And, you know, like just us being in these systems sometimes for students, and that could be like very for shy students. Like, yeah maybe some students don't have like the you know the outgoing nature to, like reach out but when they when you like go guest lecture for one of those classes and they're like dang there are doctors like you know yeah. like, and then that might be like one of the like first things that makes them like go out and like, 
you know, want to pursue more education or be in those spaces with other youth. So, so your existence, what was that thing when you shared? Your existence is resistant. Is resistant? Well, that too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it was that quote. Cool, <laughs> you always get those mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, yeah, that's <laughs> but when we think about like especially when we're like wanting to give back to our communities and you know like the struggles that we have within higher education like all these commonalities like really have a super you know usually have a strong tie to like our identity as indigenous people right because that's how we that's our worldview and that's how we function sometimes so how do you support I guess this would be my last question I know we talked about like getting students involved with like you know, other Native students and mentorship and, um, you know, finding out really how they can um, do this type of research in from an Indigenous perspective. But um, how particularly would you support a Native student's identity um, or their tie to their community in, in these spaces? Darius, look, listen really good. This is where you go. <laughs> How would you support a Darius? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm still I'm still a student, guys. <laughs> I'm all attentive, like tell me too. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, that's a big question. <laughs> My Blackfeet ad identity? Yeah. Hey, that's a lot to support. <laughs> Yeah, those black people. I know. <laughs> Selena, Selena totally just did the, the one of the women the Native women laughs. <laughs> her head just disappeared in her virtual background. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> we got to. <you. laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I feel because that's like you were saying, Selena, like I, you know, when you really are saying like meet students where they're at you're really like providing that unconditional support for their identity, right? Mm -hmm. Because our identities are so complex. Yeah, I think I was trying to figure out how to like, like focus in on that question, but I think it is really a bit, it's, it's not just how do we create those spaces, it's how do we start creating those spaces in some institutions, right? And so you have to have, there's so many components to it. It's representation, it's providing a physical space for them to be, it's acknowledging their identity, it's acknowledging and, and appreciating their experiences and what they bring to the institution or to the classroom or whatever setting they're participating in. And I just, I mean, what motivated me was I, most of my career was at the University of Montana where, you know, students were coming from, um, their small communities and their main motivation was so they could go home and help their community right and so we taught we have those conversations but we don't ever stop at the university level and say okay but what are the needs of your community right we think we know what they are when we're 18 19 20 21 whatever like we think we see we can physically see those needs but really approaching um some of the issues that are so they're bigger than us as individual people like how i think it's really important to say okay well, i i appreciate that you are majoring in i'm just saying political science and you want to lead your tribe but go back and talk to your you know talk to people in your family and say as a tribal member what are what are some of the needs that we have and you know just really hear I, because I think that's the mistake between Western institutions and indigenous education is we, we ship our students off to these universities and they're learning this way. And then we expect them to come back and like align that and not give them any tools to do that. Like not have those conversations, not create that space to support them in that transition of learning from um, a Western perspective and putting it into an indigenous community like we just there's a there's a missing connection there and so that was the motivation behind my research and i think i don't you know i like just i just found the tip of the iceberg i didn't like you know like i can't i mean i can do stuff with my research but there's still so much there that we need to be doing the infrastructure needs to be there and um you know i'm a true believer of tribal colleges like even before i did my research um, even before I worked at a tribal college I would 
hear the stories of tribal college students and the experiences they had and was just like just knew the power there and so i think like combining those two the strengths of those two institutions and really creating that environment for our native students is really really important but how do we do that where do we start kind of thing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's times when I actually think of, you know, like, I kind of wish I went to a tribal college, you know, I really wish I could have experienced that. And then, you know, maybe transfer after, but, you know, I always wanted to experience that. But, you know, what? I never really heard of tribal colleges when I was like in, in high school or, you know, um, probably like it was midway through my undergrad when I started hearing about tribal colleges. So. I mean, if I, I guess if I knew, I probably would have gone, you know, mm -hmm. but I, I kind of wish I did. <laughs> and I, I feel like identity, like it is such a, a vast um, topic to to talk about. But I think for Native people, you know, it, it is it's not an individualized identity. It's um, our identity is um, based on connections. And so our identity is embedded, you know, within us. Um, from oral tradition, from relations, from family. You know, this one time I was having a conversation with one of my professors and I said, you know, our, our identity is related to that land base. And and my professor couldn't relate to that. And he's, he's, he like walked away a few days later, we talked about it again. And he was like, Carla, I, he's like, I, he's like, I don't have that. And he goes, and I didn't realize I didn't have that until now. And so it's it's a whole different world view, but you know our identity as Native people is tied to that piece of land um, because this land base is where um, you know our our origin stories come from. This land base is um, where our people came from, and so um, so when you go to a university and you're, you're taken away from everything you've ever known and everything that supports your identity, which is your family, your relationships, your land, um, your culture. And so um, that that is like kind of dis displacement in some ways, you know, like come, like come to think of it. And we've had a history of displacement, but um, that's displaced in a, a native student into a, a different um, environment where they're not connected to all these rich things that support their identity and so how do you support that um you know when a student's displaced or in an urban setting or not on the reservation and um and i think that is complex and i think that is what we need to talk about you know many of our tribal colleges are community colleges but um you know they're we need to really um you know, not not have a glass ceiling. We don't have to be a community college. And there's a lot of community colleges that are not community colleges. We could be universities. We could build our own doctoral programs. We can do indigenous studies. We could do our own indigenous research. And, and I think, um, you know, when we talk about truly supporting American Indian people in education, I think it's building up tribal colleges and, and being at Blackfeet Community College is just so enriching, you know, and, and um, we have, our mission is tribal centered education in every single program. Um, we support our students identity by bringing in elders, um, making sure that elders have a connection to our youth. We have a Bikani um, studies program. Um, we we do several, several community events. Um, and you, you know, it's a very, it's a very rich experience. And, and when I look back on my 11 years um, at a non-native institution, I kind of feel sad looking back at that experience because of of some of the richness that I lost um, I just got like a flashing moment right now of, of the complexity of identity what we were just talking about but Darius was raised in the city here it's not to say that he didn't go back to the res but you were raised in the city you went to put the schools here but you which is which is like so amazing to me is that just because you were raised in the city you're you want to still give back, you know what I mean? Regardless if you never grew up on the res or not. Like, I thought that was like one of the points that I was thinking. Just know that like, it just amazes me that you're, 
like even though you weren't raised in the city and you lived here in the city, your way of giving back to the community, you still have that indigenous mindset, which is mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, especially in your field, right? Like, yeah. and, like that's so crazy. <laughs> Like we always think of like, oh, human services or education, yeah. social work, right? Like, oh, of course we'll give back. But like, even natives that are in like STEM, like mm -hmm. they want to still yeah. like somehow help, you know, other people. And that's, I, it's just, it, it's amazing. So. I get excited when people tell me their major and it's like STEM or, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> the science feels like, yeah, like, yeah. need more. Well, and, and I've noticed like um, in my research, the student, the native students that pursued um, science a lot of time they a lot of times they entered um, earth-based sciences like environmental sciences um, like just those sciences that are related to um, like biology um, geology that in forestry so it was just really interesting and um, there was a, a whole new concept of not only giving back to the people but learning how to to preserve and enrich the natural resources and in, in, in the earth and so um, I thought that was another way of giving back um, through a, a STEM-based perspective. Yeah. Way to go, Adarian. <laughs> 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 no, yeah, that's so true. Well, the only reason I brought that up is because I, like Adarian is not from the res. Yeah. So, you know, I was just giving a different perspective, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, you know, grew up in the like, earth, like, I just wanted to just paint that picture that, you know, we do have some kids that come from the res and, you know, we're all one of those kids. <laughs> Gosh, I remember though, like when I used to, when I worked at American Indian Student Services um, at the University of Montana, and I remember like just like the diversity of Native students that were there, right? Like the real res ones. <laughs> They're typically from Browning. No, not really. <laughs> but... <laughs> Prez from the res. <laughs> Like the real, like, yeah, the real res ones, and then like the urban ones, you know, who like might have grew up in Missoula or like, you know, a city, right, in Montana, <laughs> or Montana City, and it's like off the res. Um, like, it, it was so cool to see, especially when we had, we had our mentor program of like having all of that diversity of Native students and seeing those, like, the res Indians would like talk to the urban Indians and be like, hey, like they would make that connection for them, you know, of like navigating the system that they had been a part of pretty much their whole life, right? And then, and then like the res Indians would like provide this almost like home feeling for the urban students that like hadn't had that growing up of like, oh, this is like, you know, my parents are from there, like, you know, but like I grew up in the city. And so like it, it was like really those connections, I feel like for, that I saw happening and it was that common it was literally that common ground that they always related to was that like identity piece of like how they actually they provided for each other's identity like and that you know like yeah. that was that was amazing for me to see of like coming together as like natives like even though we come from different spaces we're still able to like do that for each other. I just want to ask think... Darius is that something that you're seeing with, the, with your brotherhood? <clears throat> like you see that with, um, with mm -hmm. yeah, fraternity <clears throat> brothers. Um, uh, my one of them, he went to Sequoia in um, Tahlequah, Oklahoma, here, and apparently, like that's how he met, um, um, connected with a bunch of other um, Cherokees and um, other um, natives here in OU. Is that a whole bunch of them came from um, Sequoia, and then so that's a connection I've seen with him. And then me coming here, I'll, I'll see another Navajo if I'm lucky, and then uh, they'll be like, oh, I have, <laughs> I have a family who lives here in Kirtland. I noticed you live in Shiprock or Farmington, which are like just like five, 10 minutes, five or 10 minutes away from from each other. And so that, that common ground stuff's really cool. Like I just see on my friend's um, Instagram story, like, oh, I saw you went on the Twin Hills. Um, if you look over there, you might, you'll see the neighborhood my um, Nellies are in. So <laughs> really cool just to, that connection with them and i think like meeting other natives from other tribes um you know there's a diversity but there's just <laughs> a whole connection um still you know um but it, it's been i have friends from all over just because because of that experience and um but it, it's still just this really um inherent connection you know 
um, regardless of which tribe. Mm -hmm. I feel connected to you guys just through Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> Virtual connection. <laughs> and it started with a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, community on Zoom. <laughs> Can I just ask two last questions and they're super, super easy. Okay, and this is gonna close us out. Do you have any more questions? No, no. Okay, so can you tell me, because we've been talking about this all day, what is your favorite res meal that reminds you of home? Res meal, red snack, snack, food, or drink? Go ahead, Selena. Pepsi, <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, a cool salt and Pepsi. Um, shoots, like home, like like Hangover Stew. As soon as I make it and see it, I'm like, oh. Do you guys know no. these guys don't know what Hangover Stew? <laughs> <laughs> Let us tell us about this, Selena. It's heavily tomato based. <laughs> <laughs> it's when you have nothing else and you put everything together. <laughs> it's just like tomato. Perfect. Three ingredients. <laughs> Unless you're fancy. <laughs> Sometimes I add corn. Don't tell nobody. <laughs> it's literally to, like tomato sauce. Well, not tomato sauce. Tomato sauce, right? Whatever. Tomato sauce. <laughs> tomato, macaroni, and burger. Yeah. Oh, we oh, have that. Okay. Yeah, we don't call it here. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we call it. <laughs> and we add corn. Too. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, no video. comment. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Darius, since you're away, what's something that you miss? <clears throat> uh, blue corn mush always a good go-to for myself. Um, <laughs> and that. Um, my Nelly say um, she makes a she makes a good um, good potato spam and chili um, That's what I was um, breakfast. <laughs> yeah, along with her uh, homemade tortillas as well. Really hits the spot. So. <laughs> you guys, <laughs> me. <laughs> me too. See, there earlier I was like the only like northern Indian who was. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and then all these guys are talking about all the stuff you just mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> still so way better than Hangover too. <laughs> Jesus. All right, what about you, Dr. Bird? Oh, I would say um, probably fry, probably fry bread. Um, you know, and then when you go to Missoula, and then your friends make fry bread, and they're from this tribe, and it's a little bit different. And then <laughs> <laughs> who makes the best fry bread? Which tribe? But um, no, it's that's one of the things. And I think it t takes a lot of talent and a lot of skill and um, a lot of patience and love to make some good fry bread. So I think a lot of people back home are probably the best fry bread makers. <laughs> true, very true. <laughs> I. I feel like I have yet to make good fry bread. Sadly. Have you, have you made it? Have you made fry bread? Only, well, not twice. <laughs> and once it was really bad. <laughs> <laughs> and the second time, well, second time I had help, but, and it turned out better, but I don't know. I just, I just rely on other people to do it. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, ours is, well, yeah, yours, yours is similar to these guys, mm -hmm. but. <laughs> Mine from home was uh, bologna sandwiches with barbecue chips. <laughs> <laughs> you put the chips in the sandwich. Ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I say in that, uh, Marty said it's, they call it Indian lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> Selena <laughs> laughs! I'm trying not to do it. <laughs> a loaf of bread and a ring of red? Is that <laughs> okay, awesome. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for being here. Like this is oh, been such a good I feel like it's been so empowering and like yes, it makes us just feel good. Mm -hmm. I hope Adarius you uh I don't know, benefited from this conversation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um it was fun. 
I enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah, because you are still in your under, and you're almost done. So guys, you're oh, almost so there. Proud of you. <laughs> so close. So close. You come back if you come back to work here. We got you. You just let us know you're coming back. We'll find we'll find your job. Before you <laughs> yeah. Like, oh yeah, you can come work with us. <laughs> or if you think about graduate school, look up rising native graduates. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, if you want to go grab the BCC, H. <laughs> <laughs> or move to Montana and go to BCC. <laughs> and get a get another undergrad degree. <laughs>